I'm Tim Lillet of Visteon. We have 110 plants in China and are building 10 plants a year in China. And the issue is, well, are you exporting from China back to the States? And the answer is no. We build in China for China. Back when Visteon was spun off, China built less vehicles than Belgium. Today, they build a lot more than the United States, and they're adding enough production for another United States worth of production. So as we look on a global basis, we're investing where our market is. When we talk about where do we go from here, the issue is talent and technology. If I, I, I set inside one of our prototypes of a vehicle that we are showing the, the industry for later this decade as to where we see the electronics going, and it's such a marvelous thing to sit in, as the guys kind of kind of laughed because I got in and turned the key and I watched the instrument panel come alive and I watched the displays come alive and I, I turned it off and turned it on again because I just loved seeing it. <laughs> it was like a video game. It was phenomenal. That technology is going to change the vehicle uh, considerably over the next 10 years. And when I look at that combined with the impact of fuel economy standards and legislative issues across the board, the technological change of the automobile in the next 10 years will be greater than the last 30. It's going to be an amazing era for the automobile. And the issue is the technology base, the creative talent to do that is here if we can harness it, if we can get people back into our industry. And I think that's, that's the challenge. And we have repotted the American manufacturing base to be globally competitive, but at a cost. And now we can't attract some of the talent in the manufacturing side that we used to because that opportunity to make a good living doesn't appear to be there. And that's the cost of, of being globally competitive. And so I think one of the challenges that we have as an industry is creating that path to an income level or that path to a career that still attracts the manufacturing talent in. We can create the path for the engineers. I have no problem for that. And there's always room for a few finance guys here and there. We can, you know, create a path for them. More than uh, a few. More than a few. <laughs> more than a few. But it's that manufacturing base, which today, to be globally competitive, is 17 to 18 bucks. That's what it is. And they have to pay for their health care. That's the dynamic. And that's what's changing a bit our ability to be able to, to, to attract, attract people in the industry. Most of us, if the parts are of any size at all, don't really want to ship across the oceans. Right. Mm -hmm. You really want to build where the market is. And I think that's the other challenge on capital, is back in 1985, 1990, when half of the business in the world was here, you knew where you were going to invest. Today, with 12% of the business here, you have a different investment. Right. One of the things, the automobile is not just an automobile. It's becoming the largest mobile device a consumer buys. Yeah. And I think, and you've seen this with Ford and some of the other, other of the OEMs, they have grasped that and they are, in a variety of terms, democratization is the word that Ford uses, of taking technology and bringing it down. And therefore, in the old days, when new technology came forward, you'd put it in the Lincolns and the Cadillacs and the BMWs and the Mercedes, and then over time it would come down. Mm -hmm. We're starting up from the bottom because it's the young people who are the most open to electronics and technology. Mm -hmm. If we embrace the fact that we are building the largest mobile device, that it's gonna be interfa interfacing with both fixed site, other vehicles, the cloud, and all the technology that that represents and the alternative engines that, that and power sources it'll need, you create excitement in the industry and excitement in manufacturing because it's a whole new world. We've got to grasp that. Maybe you've got to communicate it better. We've got to form the alliances with the universities. But it's real. And if we don't do it here, we'll do it someplace. But it's going to get done. We need a stronger industry, university alliance to prepare us for this largest mobile device story, this consumer product story, this innovation that's going on. And we've got the ability to go do it. We've got the balance sheets in the industry to go do it. We've got the leadership to go do it. I guess we just got to go do it.